Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and today is a very special video for me because it is my Christianity vlog and my Bible annotation video which will come all the way at the end but today marks my one year anniversary as a Christian and it has been a journey and I'm very very excited to share it in my journey and talk about God and my love of God and how I got to this point. So it might take a little bit to get through this but we're gonna get through it. So growing up, first I was baptized in the Episcopal Church, which growing up we really did not follow that set religion. My dad and my mom are divorced and my dad throughout the years has changed religion under the Christianity umbrella. So it was always Christianity, just different variations of this religion. But fast forward to when I'm 10 years old, I end up moving in with my dad and my stepmom, and they send me to CCD, which I had to be rebaptized. So baptism is something that I'm going to talk about a little bit later, but I was rebaptized into the Catholic Church so I could do CCD. Um, I was put in this class that was for children who were behind in their religious training because they didn't start when you're supposed to start. I don't really have all the specifics on how CCD works, but I was put into this group and it was like a speed through of what we had missed. Um, so then I ended up going through the sacraments of baptism, Holy First Communion, confession, and confirmation within the Catholic Church. Confirmation happened during my eighth grade year. Um, I was confirmed. I remember though, not really learning anything in that CCD training. It was... I don't know, I just didn't learn anything. I didn't have any personal relationship with God. Nothing of my knowledge grew. I had the basic facts about God, being the creator of the earth, being the creator of people, being the creator of me specifically, but that's really all I had. And then if we're fast forwarding all the way to college, I went to my local community college for an interpreter training program for American Sign Language and English. And it's kind of like a nursing program where you're all in the same like cohort group, where you're taking the same classes that are designated for each semester all together, and your numbers dwindle as you get closer and closer to graduation. But there was this one girl, Brie, in my class who is Christian, and she wore that on her sleeve, and you knew it, everyone knew it, it was just who she was. And I'm going to get back to her because she does play more of a part in my story. So there came a point in our training for the interpreter training program where we had to go observe working professionals in the field. And the easiest way to do that was to go to a church to observe an interpreter there. I ended up at this one church. There were a couple others that I went to, but this one church, it was Baptist church, and it is now my current church. And I walked in there and it was the first time I had never had felt like judged or condemned like I felt welcome to walk into this church I felt accepted even though I was not Christian I didn't have a personal relationship with God I was just there to watch their interpreter I wasn't really there for even the sermon or anything but that semester it was fall of 2018 I went sporadically throughout those couple months and the last service I went to was Christmas Eve 2018 and then that semester ended, I didn't have to think about going to watch an interpreter in a church, I didn't have to think about going to church, so it kind of just left my mind. Fast forward to three months, March 2019, my mom goes to me, I want to go to church, do you want to come with me? And I said, I will go with you if you go to this one church. And she agreed, and I agreed, and we went. Now at this church, they started talking about what they call 609. And 609 is a youth, like a youth group, but for young adults. So like 18 up is basically the premise of what that was. And I was intrigued. I kind of wanted to go, but I was afraid. I thought it was going to be this huge gathering of Christian people and I knew nothing and they would pick me out as an outsider and just be like, no. So I wanted to go, but I was scared and I totally blew up out of proportion what this thing was going to be. But Brie, this girl from my class, went to this church and she knew all about it. And because we were in classes together, 
multiple times a week because we took all the same courses. We were in a cohort group. She turns to me this one day and goes, hey, 609th night, do you want to come with me? And I was taken back that she asked me and I was shocked. And I think she was just as shocked when I told her, yes, I would go with her. And she goes, you know, usually I ask people to come with me to these Christian things. And they're like, no, Brie, I don't want to go. Leave me alone. And you didn't. You were like, yes, I'll go. So I think we were both shocked on this. And she ended up telling me she felt like God was telling her to ask me. And I was very happy that she did. And we go to 609 and it was run by this woman, Angela, who became a really good friend of mine and her husband, Brian, and they'd have a guest speaker um, to do like a sermon, not like really a full sermon, but to talk and do like a thing from the Bible, like a little study, a little talk, a little discussion. We'd play games, people could hang out, people could eat. There was, they had like a food bar, they had coffee if you wanted coffee. So it was a pretty relaxed environment. I blew it way out of proportion. There were not a mass amount of people. I think there were like 20 of us the first time from different churches. Um, and it was really nice. And Angela and I took a liking to each other and started talking pretty much the whole time. It was from seven to 10. We pretty much talked those whole three hours. And this is where it gets very personal in my story. So this is April. It was April 1st, 2019, the very first 609. And I remember that because we were talking about being April Fool's Day, going down to 609, driving there, as well as our pastor from the church I currently go to talking about um, the fool and what the Bible says about it. So that's why I remember that very specifically. And back in high school, when I had originally planned to go away to school, I had picked Pace University as my top university that I wanted to go to. But I ended up deciding to take a year off of college, like off of school, because I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And then I ended up going to community college, graduated in May 2019. And that was the point I was set to go away to Pace University to start my studies there, move to New York. So now we're fast forwarding to July, July 1st, 2019. So I had gone to 609 April, May, and June. And now we were there for July. Um, it's once a month that 609 would gather and there was a guest speaker, they always have one, and he was a pastor from a different church and he was talking about his journey into Christianity and how he found God and something told me that I needed to go talk to this guy and Angela was with me because she became my friend and I felt very comfortable having her. And just side note, backing up a little bit, the first night I met her, she's like, I know this is going to sound so Christian, but she's like, I'm going to pray for you. And at the time I was like, oh, okay, that's great. But now that I am a Christian and I'm a year into my journey, I realize how powerful that is to say, I'm going to pray for you and to pray for someone. Little other side note on this is I found it's very hard to dislike or hate someone when you pray for them. I have recently done that for someone that I got into a huge disagreement with and I my response was you know what when I went into my nightly prayers I'm gonna pray for him and yeah you really can't hate somebody you're praying for but back to on track with this timeline here so I felt the need to talk to this pastor and I did and I had Angela with me and he's like well tell me what you know about God and like I was telling you I knew the facts basically and he's like yeah it sounds like you know the facts but you don't know him personally and something that i have kept very close to my heart that nobody knows is that i wanted to have a relationship with god but i didn't know how to pray and i was so like i don't want to use the word jealous because it's not the right word but for lack of a better word right now we'll go with that one i wanted to have that relationship I wanted to be able to pray with God and to God and I didn't know how and he's like well you start with like give your life over to God and he's like I will model this prayer for you and he did and he's like and now you can do it he's like I can sit here with you if you'd like and I said yes and I had him and Angela sit so the three of us were sitting at this table in private during the middle of 609 and I prayed and 
it wasn't just any prayer it was me saying that I trusted God with my life and from that point on it was his and I was leaving everything in his hands and that was a really pivotal moment for me and now we are now we're here a year later and what a year that was so I do want to talk about this past year specifically as a Christian and coming into my relationship. So I said I was set to go away to college. Um, Pace University, my top choice, New York City, Manhattan. I was so ready, I was so excited. Um, July, I went away on vacation with my dad's stepmom and sister. We visited a relative in Florida as well as to Disney World. When I came home, there was an issue with the financial end of going away to school and I couldn't go. And when I tell you devastated, that doesn't even begin to fully encompass what was happening. So, and I didn't get it. I was like, I just gave my life over to God and now the one thing I really want is being taken away from me. And I do have reflections on that now that I'm on the other side of it. So, also during all this time, my grandmother, who we call Tebby, she was diagnosed with cancer. Um, that was probably back in May of 2018, I wanna say. I don't have the exact date offhand, but we all were very optimistic because the doctors were very optimistic. And I come home from Florida and my mom's like, Tebby's not doing so great. So I was dealing with that on top of losing school. And when the time came when I would have gone away to school, my grandmother was still pretty okay. But September 28th, she did pass. Wow, I'm really emotional. As devastated as I was to lose out on school, I cannot imagine going away thinking she was okay and getting a phone call home, being alone in Manhattan, to come home because she's gone. Wow. <laughs> so while I was originally so angry about losing school, it was God's timing because I can't imagine not having those last couple months with her and not being there. And we had such a special relationship that I'm so happy I could be with her, even though it was a very long, drawn out, hard process. So yeah, God's timing works perfect. I got to be there and I got to hold her hand and we had a special relationship. When I lived with my mom growing up, she also lived with us and we share a birthday. So my birthday is July 2nd, so it's tomorrow as would have first been was over me. like there I was I just gave my life over to God and I was just hit with so many difficult things but I don't think I could have gotten through it if I didn't have God and I didn't have that relationship with him and I didn't have his love and I didn't love him back and so that is a huge part of my journey hi just popping in um I didn't mention this when I initially recorded but not going to school also allowed me to get the job that I'm currently at, which is a sales job, which A, I never thought I'd be great at sales because I'm really not that outgoing. I'm really introverted, but I actually am good at it. But more importantly, I've made really great friends from my coworkers, which not everybody can say their coworkers are their actual friends. And the friends that I made are actually my friends that I talk about in my book club. And so yeah, that's just something I wanted to mention as a positive of me not going away to school. Okay, thanks. Back to the video. During all this time, I was Bible reading, not like consistently. So 2020 this year is I'm reading the Bible through, reading the Bible in a year. Um, it's chronological plan. So it takes you through the Bible chronologically. Um, it's on the version Bible app that you can find it. There's a chronological plan and then there's also the Bible recap plan, which is hosted by D Group, which they have the plan and then they have a podcast 
that recaps each episode after you you read um so with that let's get into bible studying and my journey through reading and how i annotate my bible also i did say i'd come back to this baptism so i've been baptized twice episcopal and catholic but the bible doesn't actually talk about baptism until jesus is baptized in the bible and i know my church does it i think once a year um where anyone who feels that they are ready to be baptized which doesn't wash away sin or doesn't change anything it's a sim a symbolic ceremony of i'm washing away the old and i am new and i'm a new creation in god and that's what what happens when you give over your life to god you're born again which is why they call it born again but you're born anew and you're born in the image of christ so my bible journey this bible i talked about this in my introduction my friend angela who i met at 609 gave me this bible back in july of 2019 there was like a beautiful note that she wrote out and she did highlight a quote for me which i'm gonna find and i think i'll read that quote to you um, i know it's in the book of john Book of John. Oh wait, I think I found it. Okay, so this is what she highlighted for me and she put in writing for you July 2019. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And so July, she gave this Bible to me right before I left for Disney World and I have the YouVersion Bible app on my phone and I wasn't really sure what I was going to do about reading. They have, um, what do they call it? They call it verse of the day. So I'd read the verse each day and the two of us ended up, oh hi Lucy, uh, the two of us ended up doing a Bible study through the book of John separate from this. It's not on the app, it was the actual book. Hold on. This is the book, so it's a Bible study um, through the book of John. Um, Discovering the Real Jesus, Seven Encounters with Jesus from the Gospel of John by Rebecca Mainly Purit? Tepret? Tepret? Okay, really bad with names here. But it has seven different um, stories from John and it it was pretty great um and I would take notes and the two of us would do this we pretty we tried to do every one every week but sometimes things got a little bit backed up so they'd have the excerpt from the bible with questions that you would answer and this thing called live what you learn kind of recap some stuff and notes that you can put in here um and that was for all seven so we did this I was reading the verse of the day and I think it was August that I initially tried to do the chronological plan in a year. And that plan takes you through part of Genesis. So you start at the very beginning and then you get through a little bit of Genesis. You jump over to the book of Job and you read through Job. Job is a book about suffering and again, talk about God's perfect timing. I was reading about Job and how to deal with suffering and this was at the time when my grandmother was on the decline so yeah crazy crazy timing but for me it's crazy because it's like wow how perfect of timing god has it's not a shock to him but wow to me and then you finish the book of job you jump back over to genesis then you move on to exodus and this is where things kind of snafued for me i got to exodus and our pastor had done a series um, called Love God and Love Others, which breaks down the Ten Commandments. And there's, I don't remember exactly where, and it's in the New Testament, uh, when someone asked Jesus, what is the most important commandment? And he goes, it's about loving God and loving others. And that's how you can break down the commandments. So we did a 10 week sermon series on this. And 
So I knew that was coming and I knew once I got to the Ten Commandments I wanted to study them more in depth because I wanted to go back and re-listen to those sermons and really draw on them and really get a better understanding. So but I got into Exodus, I was like, I'm confused, I'm not getting anything out of it. I was like cruising through this book, like, which is not something you want to do when it's your Bible. You don't want to be like, all right, check that off, done. I, I wanted to have deeper meaning and again, God's perfect timing, a, a different reading plan popped up on the YouVersion Bible app. It was called Finding God in All of Ex, Finding Jesus in All of Exodus. And it took you through and showed you the connections to the New Testament. Then it, after Exodus, wait, hold on. I think it's Leviticus. Is Leviticus the next one? Yes, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. And then you get to 1 Samuel. And 1 and 2 Samuel coincides with 1 Chronicles. And then 1 and 2 Kings coincides with 2 Chronicles. And the Psalms are kind of mixed throughout. So once we got to that point in my reading plan, I was jumping. Some days I was in 1 Samuel only, some days I was in 1 Chronicles, some days I was in Psalms, some days I was in all three books. But yeah, so that's basically how the reading plan has gone. And when I went into quarantine, I just want to say I was like six weeks behind on being on track for reading through the Bible in a year because I had restarted Exodus. But I, my, I said to my friend Angela, I said, I want to be able to be caught up and be able to do one day of reading each day. I want it to be done in a habit before I get out of quarantine and I did it and I'm so proud of myself and so happy and I find myself sometimes at work being like, oh, I can't wait to get off and go home and read my Bible. Wow. I have definitely changed a whole lot in this past year. That is not something I would have said when I first gave my life over to God because it wasn't even something I was thinking about reading the Bible but here I am so now I want to talk about how I annotate so very specifically I log on to my YouVersion Bible app pull up the plan and what it tells me to read for the day I listen to it I they have the option to play it for you I have them read to me as I follow along in my Bible I will highlight with so I have a very specific black pen. So I highlight, like underline what I find important, whether it's a quote that's like, wow, that really speaks to me, or wow, that's important. Like I should remember that because it's going to come to play throughout the rest of the book. These, it's a huge, it's a big book that's all connected. It's not just random tidbits for, for fun. It all has a higher purpose and a higher meaning. So that's what I use this black pen for. I underline and then I like to keep track of the date. So I use blue pen. This one is a four part pen, but the black ink's gone. The red ink, I don't use it super often, um, but I use it when I have like a question that I still can't find the answer to. Like, so anything that's like, wow, I still don't understand. Or I just have questions about it. It gets, a question mark drawn on with red ink. Blue is for the date and that's that. So I listen to it as I go through. I underline what I think is important to me, to what's to come. And then after I do that, I listen to the Bible recap, which, which the host Tara Lee Cobble talks about um, what you just read, important points to hold on to, how it all connects to the bigger picture. And I write down notes. This, I have a very specific way I write down my notes too. I'm not going to show you all them, but this is also my third notebook of notes. Um, there's two full notebooks already done. Okay, so this notebook, completely full. Complete, like, all the way to the end. Filled with notes. Then I have this little little baby notebook it's so good I got this when I went to the UN building in New York City and it's made from recycled apples and um, it smells like apples I know it's really weird I just smelled the notebook but it smells like apples because it's made from recycled apples it's the I think it's the core that they make it from I don't know but again totally filled 
with notes. So now I'm on this third notebook. So also sometimes if like I think of something, I'll jot it down with what chapter and verse it relates to. And then I'll write down notes from the Bible recap podcast that I think are really important. And because I am really in depth and really like to get as much as I can out of my study, if, okay, not if, let me take that back. A while back before I went to this church, the pastor had done a sermon series called the Old Testament and the New Testament. And he literally goes through each book and talks about them as like just a general overview. Of so I listened to those as well to get understanding. And if he talks about like a sermon series that he talked more in depth about, then I will go find that sermon series. Like for example, the book of Ruth. <laughs> I ended up really loving the book of Ruth. And I'm gonna show you that because there's a whole lot of writing in here. It's a four chapter book. Like, look how filled these pages are. There's, I couldn't write anywhere else if I tried. And then here's the other page. Like, there's nowhere else to write. But that book I did a very deep, in-depth study of, and that was great. So the way I write in these notebooks, so I get two different, sh different colors this is just the colors I'm using now, this like fun blue color and black, any black. color, it keeps changing. Um, the one notebook I ended up using purple and green, like purple was to, or no, it was purple and pink. So purple was my note writing and pink was to um, notate what chapter and verse and book it came from. So just right now I'm just using black and blue. Black I write my notes on and blue I write the date, I write what day and like like what day in the plan I'm on and what I read for that plan as well as when I'm taking a note if it's um chapter 7 verse 10 I'll write 7 verse 10 and then I'll write the rest of the note in here but this way I can see looking at it okay this is where what verse it's particular to and then like I said I go in and I underline with this date with this and then I have this green pen. I use green very specifically for when I make connections between things that happen in my Bible. And I wanna find an example because it's kind of hard to talk in vague terms here. So, I wanna find like a, I want to Like all these pages are written on. It makes me so happy when I see pages that just have writing all over them. Um, Especially because when I like flip to something that's like, well, that has writing on it. Something that's blank, like, kind of like here. Actually, this is a good page just to, to stop on for what I'm looking for. Here, like, I have not read here yet. But this here, you can see is like bracketed, underlined. I have dates. And then you can see, can you see? it's like a green line. And it has a book and a verse that I'm trying to reference. So this right here is Jeremiah 13, 17 verse 13. And what I have underlined in this, for they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living water. And now I have this green mark to John 4, 14. And so that for me means I'm gonna flip to John 4, 14. And find it and I'm gonna read it. And it says, for whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I Give, will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life so that to me is the connection that's a jump that I made from the Old Testament to the New Testament and that there to me is proof that God all along had this plan for Jesus to come my faith in summary is about Jesus Christ is my savior that we are all sinners in need of a savior and it's not by anything I can do to get into heaven it's by believing in Jesus and trusting in him and his sacrifice that he made by dying a sinner's death even though he lived a perfect life and my relationship with God has become so strong and my love for him has just grown beyond what I could ever have thought it could could be um and I am so happy 
and so delighted in him to be called his and be his daughter. So if you stayed around and watched, thank you so much. And I will see you soon for more content. Bye.